Oh, we are live, it says. Yes. That's what it says. That's what it says. That's what it says. It says we're live. Am I, I alive? I think true. I'm alive today. I wonder if that's true. I wonder if anybody's watching us right now. What do you think? Uh, it says zero. So give them a minute. Let it let it let it let folks know we on. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Let it let folks know we do what we do. Uh do the share thing. Doing all of that. Let me see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna share to that page. Man, I got all kinds of pages I'm sharing this thing too, man. <clears throat> I ain't like that. I'm glad you like oh, that. Oh yeah. Like How you feel today, JBK? You know, I'm doing pretty good today for a rainy Thursday. I'm doing pretty darn good. You know it is, man. It's kind of it's kind of a little cloudy here, a little rainy, a little mm -hmm. sunny, or not sunny, but snowy on the on the mile high joint today. Um but you know, I mean actually, actually, this is a great day to have this topic, man. Uh, these yeah. kind of these kind of days is kind of normally, you know, normally when uh you know when 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 the mentals kind of get yeah. get a little twisted up a little something, something. Kind of goes a little um, hand in hand. With the weather it does man uh so it's kind of it's kind of a little interesting here man um this is kind of a great a great uh a great topic for today as y'all know if you if you know anything about us you know we just right now we look like we're talking but we're really killing time while we try to share this thing uh i don't know for some reason uh it works better when you tag me i don't know what the deal all is. right well i'll tag you in there yeah, tag me in there, man. I can do that. Right now, right now, I'm watching us watch us. <laughs> That's usually how it goes. <clears throat> That's exactly how it goes, man. Um, but yeah, man, this is actually this is a good day for this kind of this kind of talk, man. This kind of this kind of discussion, man. You know, I, a lot of times we ask, you know, we ask each other. A lot of times we ask people, "How you doing?" You know, and uh, and you know i mean i think um i think a lot of times we don't we don't wait for the answer to that question no we just go i think we just i think we just kind of you know blow right through that answer man um and uh and i think i think we do ourselves a, a disservice when we do that man you know i think um i think we do a disservice because we don't wait for that answer you know because we don't uh we don't we don't sit back and and actually take a minute to process what that answer is man and you know i think this is it's a great opportunity to have this discussion man first of all if you're watching this on uh you know on 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 facebook and if you're watching this at the live time go to the mad minute masculinity page on facebook and you'll see this and we would love to get your live comments and all that kind of stuff uh, but if you're definitely watching this on YouTube and any of the other platforms, man, let us know you're out there. Yeah, if you're if you're watching this on on my page or on Kirk's uh, personal page, and you're making comments, we won't see them until after. So if you want us to see them live, go to the Mad Men and Masculine page, and we will see them live. We'll see them live. Hey, speaking of, I am Kirk M. Samuels, and I am Jason B. Kendrick, and we are. The mad men of masculinity. That's right. We're just real men having real conversations for you. And tonight like it's Kirk's that, turn. I like doing that. I like doing like that for you. you. I like, I like doing that, man. I like doing so, that, man. I like so doing this is, that. This, this is your ball game, pitcher. Go ahead and throw well, out the first ball. You know, man. You know, this is um, this is a tough one, man. This is a tough one, definitely for a lot of guys. But I think this is a conversation we need to have. Um, I think this is uh this is a you know we have a lot of real conversations around here and and this is we don't really shy away from much of nothing <laughs> um and we're willing to go into the into the into the deep grass to have some real conversations man yeah. and sometimes we agree on stuff sometimes we don't agree on stuff sometimes people don't agree with us sometimes our timelines blow up after the fact with people <laughs> just hammering us with all kinds of you know we've had we've had some opinionated conversations we've had some very that. opinionated comments conversations from people that don't really like our opinions about stuff but it is what it is you know we it still happens. gonna do what we do 
you don't have to agree, and that's okay. Um, that actually brings up know. a good point. I, I, I felt like after last week I should bring this up. So to borrow a little bit from Course of Miracles, some of what we're going to bring up and talk about you, you may be quite shocking to you. You may not agree mm-hmm. with it, and, and, and you don't have to agree with it. But if you will utilize the information in your life, you will, you will find it benefit. So, yeah. <laughs> yes, this this may yeah. be quite shocking for you. Some of the stuff yeah. we say, yeah. and it may you know may be quite startling for you. So, be yeah. and, and, you know, and again, a lot of it is just different perspectives. You know, I got my experience as a guy, as a man, as a black man in America, growing up. You know, born and raised on the East Coast. Mm-hmm. My military experience, my experience as a father, as a ex husband, as a husband, as a all these things. You got your experience as a white man in America, you know, from the South, you know, you got your military career. We both got our father stories. We both got, you know, relationship stories, but at the same time, we both work with people, yeah. um, you know, in, 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 in coaching circles and in just friend circles and all that kind of stuff. So we also have an additional opinion that a lot of people may not have perspective anyway, because of our work with, not only our own lives, but then in other people as well. So, um, yeah, it's uh, those different perspectives. And and part of the reason that we do the work we do is because we've had our own struggles and especially with the topic tonight. But, um, anytime we do bring up a stereotype or we do bring up, uh, something that you may not agree with. A lot of times I know people don't like stereotypes, but anything we mention will usually come from an article or a story or a blog post or something that somebody's real experience. So if it's mm-hmm. not your experience and you don't agree with it, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But like tonight mm-hmm. we're talking from our experience, from mm-hmm. our lives and from mm-hmm. the lives of men that we work with. So, yeah. Yeah. And you know, a lot of times stereotypes are stereotypes for a reason. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, you know, it is what it is, but Hey man, I, I, so there's a, a story, and I'll tell you the kind of impetus of this, uh, at least from, from my mindset over the past week or two. There was a story of, um, uh, there is a story of a former NFL player by the name of uh, Vincent Jackson. And uh, he played, I think he played for the Bucks. I think he played for the Chargers. Um, and like sometime in the last couple of weeks, he was found dead in a hotel room. And uh, that's a pretty sad story. And you know, but to expand the story a little bit bigger, um, you know, on the surface, he had a lot of things going on. You know, he's a big, strong, good looking guy, former NFL player. Um, you know, it, it seemed like everything on the surface, like his, you know, his family life, it, it appeared OK. He had, you know, um, he had a, a nonprofit, uh, you know, that he was kind of running and all these kind of things. But uh, but then, you know, and they haven't come back as far as I know with all the final toxicology reports and all that kind of stuff. But but uh, it turns out that he had been staying and living in this hotel for some period of time. And as a matter of fact, um, um, when they found him, he had been dead in the room several days. Um, and uh, and so that really just man, it just really. It really brought something up in me in terms of like, man, when we go through stuff as men, and I mean, it appears that, you know, what his life might have seemed like may not be like what it was. Maybe I'm speculating, but maybe he had some family issues. But for some reason, he was living at a hotel. And in addition to that, um, somehow he passed away and several days went by and nobody recognized that he was gone. Um and, you know, what kind of challenges, you know, he must have had or who knows what kind of, uh, you know, what, what his real life story was about. But I started to wonder. Um, and, and it's a viable question, man. Like, you know, if I if I died, how many days would it be before somebody knew I was gone? And, and by that, I'm talking about our, our circle, like our social circle. And even an expanded vision of that, um, I think our social circle really uh, points a lot to our mental um, health, I guess you could say, our mental capacity, like how strong we're doing mentally. Um, And uh, and I know a lot of guys struggle with a lot of stuff, man. And quite often, we don't talk about that stuff, man. We don't talk about the the mental issues that we might have. You know, he might have, who knows, he might have CTE for all I know or some kind of you know issues going on. I have no idea. But how many of us have struggled as men and do not have a tight enough social circle around us that would know that we're gone after a few days? And 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 that would indicate that we're probably not living 
in a way where we're opening up to people where people know what's going on in our lives and and know where we stand mentally and so it's such a tough topic man but just the whole idea of mental health from a male perspective we're not used to talking we're not used to opening up we're not used to getting vulnerable and and you know all those kinds of stigmas that go along with that but um but man how many of us go through something or are going through something that really need some folks, a circle of guys to talk to, to be with, and maybe even therapy, uh, maybe even professional therapy, uh, or at, at, at least coaching or, or just a friend circle or something like that. And so, so yeah, so the idea, the topic of men's mental health, man, and just the things that we go through, man, and the struggles that we have and, and, um, and all those kinds of things, man, you guys from the military, you know, where they, you know, I, I've heard it at one point, it was, you know, 22 veterans a day committing suicide and all these kinds of even more now. Yeah. And man, it's like, you know, how are we as men in terms of feeling free and safe enough to reach out and talk to other people? I think that, I mean, you've kind of hit the nail on the head as far as being able to communicate and feeling safe to communicate. I mean, you look at the training in the West, especially here in the States, about what it means to be a man. You know, all the suck it up, don't be a pussy, you're a man, you know, just bit, grin and bear it and move on. And then you add to that, like, we, we don't have any sort of natural emotional intelligence upbringing. So we have these emotions that we're not supposed to understand, that we don't understand most of the time, and we're not supposed to talk about them. And then you add into that things like nice guy syndrome, where underneath nice guy syndrome, I mean, the, the, the base cause of that is not feeling safe being yourself. So if I don't feel safe being myself, and so I've got to put on this front and these airs, but I also am not allowed to or don't feel comfortable or that I can talk to somebody about it. And then usually with that somebody, especially for most of us men, once we get out of our 20s, we, we've lost that kind of, you know, the school yard friends. And, and so it's either work or if we have a church community or, you know, there's something or but most of the time it's your significant other. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a, a relationship and now this person, this woman or man or whoever, you know, whatever your significant other may be, has to become now your your rock, your your, your emotional sounding board. And that's a lot of weight for anybody to carry and mm -hmm. finding a, a group or finding other men. I think, you know, it, for nice guy syndrome specifically, because that's really the one thing that one of the one things that I really struggled with was being afraid of other men. But it's really other men who have had these experiences that we need to connect with and, and be able to express these things with because it's other men that are going to understand because they're. Just like the you know mass and masculinity book by Lewis Howes. I mean, he had like seven or nine different masks that we as men wear: the stoic mask, mm -hmm. the you know know-it-all mask, the athlete mask, mm -hmm. the the, the mm -hmm. you know the achiever mask, and you know all these different masks that we put on to cover up because we don't feel safe just being ourselves. Mm -hmm. hmm. and, and then and then we end up being fake, and you know, and then we end up you know living lonely and isolated and cut off. Um, and when, when you're cut off, you know, I believe that, you know, and, and I've gone through, a, you know, phases or stages in life where I, you know, I was considering um, maybe even more than considering, you know, ending my life. And, um, and, you know, the bedrock or one of the major factors in that stage of existence is loneliness and isolation. You know, I think. I think suicide exists at the intersection of loneliness and hopelessness um, and, and maybe even some degree of shame in there as well in terms of the ingredients to, to that existence. And, you know, I, I don't think people, you know, people don't commit suicide in a crowd. They don't commit suicide in a small group. You don't commit suicide in, you know, in, in, a, in a men's meeting or a men's group or, 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 or a church or a sporting event, or, you know, you know, you know, that's not an environment where that flourishes because I think connection is one of the, you know, one of the antidotes to, to, to being in that kind of mental space. Yeah. And I think one of the things you just said really kind of triggered because I've been, you know, always in, in the books, you know, I was listening to No More Mr. Nice Guy again, the mask masculinity and all these, and, the toxic shame mm -hmm. 
there's there's a, a an epidemic of toxic shame among men nowadays mm. and it could be culturally it could be just socioeconomic it could be it's probably a combination of all these different things but there's actually a feeling among a lot of men that being male isn't okay anymore mm. and then you add on that the fact that we don't feel comfortable expressing these things we don't have the vocabulary to mm. talk to people about what we're feeling mm -hmm. and and you that it just turns into this this <clears throat> yeah, I think um, you know, I, I think at least on my side, it looks like it looks like you might have dropped off, JBK, or maybe you're coming back. Must have had some uh, electrical issues. I don't know. Sorry, <clears throat> technical difficulties. We're Sorry. Low <laughs> yeah. So yeah, go ahead. that that, that uh, deadly cocktail of of, of toxic shame of, of not feeling comfortable or feeling safe just to be yourself without wearing a mask or, or people pleasing or, or caretaking or, you know, having some sort of role. Like I, I wonder about Vincent Jackson and, and, you know, I'm assuming being an NFL player, he wore that athlete mask very strongly. And then what was going on underneath that, you know, I know even from like Lewis Howe's perspective and in, in his book, he talked about the abuse and, and, and what he suffered as a child and, and, not having a healthy outlet to heal that he decided that he would be become this athlete and that would be his persona so all these personas that we're living under because we don't feel comfortable enough being ourselves and that creates that toxic shame of well i'm not good enough just being me and then mm -hmm. if i can't talk about that to somebody who's safe i mean you think about locker room talk you think about even in the military or just in the job space as a man getting vulnerable or getting or, or showing emotion tends to get a lot of, of blowback. Mm. And, and that can even come from some of the ladies in our lives too. You know, they want us to be vulnerable and then we are, and they're like, eh, I don't know if I can handle that. You know, but we have this, this toxic mixture that, that is sending a lot of men to, to an early mm. grade, unfortunately. Yeah. Cause see, sometimes I think, you know, and I just got this picture in my head, uh, you see, no, Keys the grid couldn't the handle the truth. truth. You're right. That's you, right. Were dropping, you were dropping it so thick, man, that it shut down the shut down the connection. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, I think I think sometimes as guys, you know, when we show up with the armor on, whether it's the armor of our profession, of our you know unhealthy masculinity, of uh, whatever that face is, whatever that front that mask is, when we show up with the armor, I think sometimes just because. It's because of that shame. It's because of that stigma. It's because of the weakness. It, it's not. It's not. I have this armor on because I'm going to go out and fight an enemy. I have this armor on to protect me from the world really seeing who I am underneath this armor. So sometimes the armor is a front. That sometimes the armor that we wear as men is just to protect us from the perceive what the world perceives of of us. Um, again, almost as a barrier to to us being able to be real and to 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 you know to be vulnerable in that kind of way. Yeah, I think a lot of times even that armor is part of our own protection. We're 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 because you think about it, you put armor on, what whether it's a mask or whatever, that's just to fight something, that's to protect mm -hmm. you for something. So you're putting armor on, you're in fight or flight, you're in that highly stressed mm -hmm. state all the time because you're constantly mm -hmm. on guard looking for the next threat looking mm -hmm. for who's going to be the, the you know could cause you harm and, and that in in the, in the worst thing about it is it doesn't have to be real harm it, it could just mm -hmm. be perceived you know perceived. like it, it doesn't have to be the saber tooth tiger like back in the old days it could be your mother-in-law or it could be mm -hmm. your boss or your girlfriend mm -hmm. or whatever mm -hmm. and so you're in that constant state of fight and flight and if there's not a release of that mm -hmm. stress it's not a release of that pressure Mm -hmm. It's either going to you're either going to blow up or implode, mm -hmm. and I think that's a lot of why we're struggling nowadays mm -hmm. as as mm -hmm. men in this culture to to find a, a healthy release and to even find not even just a release but to find actual healing because the release is one thing. I see yeah. I see well, a lot of the acting out mm -hmm. is trying to release that pressure. Mm -hmm. trying to release that pressure. And, and even you know, man, you you just touched on it there. Of you know, what if it? What if for for some? You know, it comes down to that wound that we have, that wound that we have from boyhood anyway, um, where it, 
it, it's almost easier to put armor on top of that wound as a, than healing that wound or working on that wound. And, and so, you know, maybe part of the kind of cultural experience of growing up as from boy to man is to know how to be a man, a healthy man to heal, which means healing these wounds. So I'll be an unhealthy man, which means putting on the armor to cover up these wounds. And so that way you don't have to see my wound. All you see is my armor. All you see is the car I drive or, or, or the woman that I'm with or, or the career that I have or the whatever it is or, or the, all the time I spend in the gym. You know, all you see is that, but you don't see the actual wound. The problem, I think, with that is that when you don't deal with that wound, you just bleed underneath the armor. Right. And, and you, you just bleed into your own armor and it just builds up and builds up until it suffocates you. You know, and, and so I think, you know, as guys, when we just when we put on that armor and we don't deal with that thing, we don't deal with those wounds. We don't address those. Um, then, you know, even though we think we're doing one thing, we're actually doing something completely different. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a great point. I wonder how much of what we consider normal nowadays is just putting on a mask, putting on a front is just just putting on an armor or some something to to deal with the wound underneath that we're afraid to look at i mean you know going going back to just the core of nice guy syndrome and what that what that you know comes from or what what that feeling is that that generates a lot of that people pleasing and caretaking and and hiding and and lying and manipulation is not feeling good enough to be as you are Mm -hmm. like i don't feel good enough to who as i am and so Mm -hmm. that takes work that takes Mm -hmm. being seen and being vulnerable but if Mm -hmm. all we're doing is covering up Mm -hmm. with Okay, well, I got the nice car, I got the money, I got the girl, I got this or that, but that's still, I'm still bleeding internally. I still have that wound. Mm-hmm. Where can mm-hmm. I find the healing there instead of the covering up? And I think a lot of us put on multiple layers, not just one mask. We have many mm-hmm. to cover up because I think part of that, and I know from, in my experience, I mean, one of the things I've said multiple times in relationships, like, well, if you really knew me, you mm-hmm. wouldn't love me, or if you really mm-hmm. knew me, you would leave. And that's part of that not feeling mm-hmm. good as just who I am. Mm-hmm. And I know a lot of the men that we work with have that exact same thought and feeling. Mm. You know, man, just that whole, man, you really tapped into it right there. The whole notion of, and I'm telling you, this is such a guy thing. Like I am unlovable the way I am. And if you, and to the point of, yeah, if you knew me, there's no way you could love me kind of thing. And, you know, I'm sure women deal with that in some pers- respects, but guys specifically, since it's a guy centered conversation today, you know, we totally have that whole thing of, you know, man, like if, if, if the whole world just saw me as I am, they would see that I'm not a man, that I'm a wounded boy and they would see all of my flaws and my weaknesses. And, and and so I gotta, I gotta do something to cover all that up. And I gotta do something to, you know, addiction is a way to cover all that up. Addiction is a way for you not to see your wounds, you know, but underneath all of that, the whole reality is, Man, if you don't deal with those wounds, they never, ever go away. Like if I cut myself, if I don't do anything just because of the way my body is made, it will stop bleeding. Most people, you know, unless there's some rare conditions that it won't. But, you know, at some point it'll stop bleeding. It'll scab over and, you know, to heal up. I may have a scar, blah, 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 blah. But but those emotional wounds, those mental wounds, the the traumas that we experienced in life. Like if you don't deal with that, they never, ever go away. They just fester. Even if they fester beneath the surface, they just fester, man. And, 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 and they end up, you know, either causing us to medicate that pain in some kind of way, or at some point they, they literally just cause us to just go away and, and, and just say, I'm, I'm out of here. I'm checking out. Yeah. I mean, that's probably the biggest issue is, is, yeah, I want to say probably that is the biggest issue is that we as men aren't taught and don't feel safe to express those things we, we're not mm-hmm. supposed to have emotions we're supposed to be stoic and know it all and mm-hmm. and be in control and courageous all the time so our biggest fear is to show our vulnerabilities to show mm-hmm. our emotions and unfortunately or fortunately however you know it fleshes out that is the only way to heal those things is to mm-hmm. be vulnerable is to show that we are lovable just as we are and that mm-hmm. you have to take the arm off you got to take the mass off and mm-hmm. that but you got to do it with somebody safe and i know mm-hmm. I think part of the the things that happens when it comes to addictions and, and, and coping with those wounds is that we will sometimes, and I've done it in my past where I've just like dump trucked on somebody. I just, just dumped everything on them 
mm-hmm. thinking I was sharing, but that was just another protective yeah. mechanism because you know we can't handle that. And they'd be like, damn, dude, you got too much. I, I can't handle all that. You know, I got to go. Mm-hmm. So finding a safe place, finding a safe environment that you can gradually share. And it's it's a process. You're not going to just open up the valve and blow somebody away with it. It's like yeah. piece by piece. But being able to open up and realize you are good enough just as you are. You, 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 you are lovable just as you are. And I think not having those outlets... Mm-hmm. is really the issue we mm-hmm. we have to find more outlets for men mm-hmm. with men that have a safe yeah. place to, to be vulnerable and be open together so they can say oh wait now n- not only am i not alone but i am lovable just as i am yeah so thank you so much donna for sharing and man if we could if we could have a a top fan award nicole you definitely would be up there because i mean you you're pretty you're pretty faithful with your with uh, checking us out and with your comments she goes guys don't get the outlet that women get women have friends and community that uh, they can get vulnerable with where men get mocked or ignored and that's, that's right you are absolutely Preach correct girl, yeah. <laughs> i mean you are you 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 are 100 correct on that one i mean the social structure is not really built into the world of masculinity in some common ways. That's why we come up with sports in a way to for us to 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 bind or come together and and have camaraderie and a reason to get together and all those kinds of things. And so it's you know community and and connection is not really built in. And so we do end up having to find ways to medicate those things or to deal with those things alone outside of the whole idea of community. And that's a scary place because when a man is outside of community, he is dangerous. Literally, when a man is outside of community, he is dangerous. You show me a serial killer that had a strong community. You show me a mass murderer that had a strong community. I mean, you show me, I mean, you show me someone that's deep, heavy in addiction and you and that has a strong community that they're in and a part of and around you know they even say i've heard it that you know the opposite of addiction is not sobriety the opposite of addiction is connection mm-hmm. but when a man is outside a community he's a dangerous man he's a threat to society he's a threat to harm himself or others uh, but unfortunately us as men we're not that's not part of what it means to grow up in the idea of masculinity to have community I mean, we got like, look at our old icons, you know, the Lone Ranger, you know, mm-hmm. the, you know, Rambo, he was out there by himself, you mm-hmm. know, well, Wolf McQuaid, whatever. It's always about the strong guy by himself right off mm-hmm. in the sunset. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you have a point that most of these people who act out like that or, or cause these issues don't have a strong community. And you, you have these old paradigms of this is what it means to be a man. He's isolated. He's, he's, he doesn't need anybody else. He's an island among you know, himself. But then, of course, if you don't have a community, you don't have someone else to just mm-hmm. bounce ideas off of or to, to be around. You can get mm-hmm. you can you can go either down to the suicidal realm or you can go to mm-hmm. the you know sociopathic kind of you know crazy realm. Like there's mm-hmm. not something there to kind of go. Oh wait, am I being nuts mm-hmm. right now? Right. You know, and I think one of the things you were saying about community it doesn't have to necessarily even be about sports. Sometimes just being in the presence of other men, like you. you it doesn't have to be this like I need to bear my soul with all the guys I see kind of thing. Just being around other guys in community, just camping or playing golf or just doing something, just that energy together is very healing and grounding. Mm-hmm. You know, so you don't have to feel like, oh, I gotta go find men and, and bear my soul right away. Mm-hmm. Just being around men, just that energy will help you mm-hmm. to start to go, oh, maybe I am okay. Because when yeah. we isolate ourselves, we don't have that example of other masculinity to go. Oh, wait, maybe I maybe I'm I am normal. But mm-hmm. when you're by yourself, you, you don't have any example or any reference to right. be like, oh, it's not just me. Oh, I thought yeah. it was just me. So yeah. And you know, even to Nicole's point, we end up taking on a lot of the weight and burden of those that are around us. And we tend to do it silently. We tend to, you know, uh, you know, a lot of people in our families, you know, our kids or significant others, spouses or whatever, don't even necessarily realize the weight that they put on us and just, you know, expect us to just naturally carry. And I picture in my mind, you know, I tend to think of pictures. I'm picturing a pillar, a pillar that's holding up a structure, right? And and and, and no one checks in. When's the last time you've walked by a pillar 
and checked in on it to see how it was doing, holding up this building that you're inside of. It just doesn't right. really happen. You right? only check it when, it when it cracks and falls over. When it over. crashes down, absolutely. <laughs> and so, you know, but at the same time, those pillars aren't singular. Like there's not a building that's held up by one pillar. So when we get together, you know, the whole notion of pillars in our society, when we get together, we can be pillars, but we got to do it in some sense of community, even if it's amongst, amongst guys um, that, that, that we can feel safe with. You know, that I think every guy needs at least one, probably two, maybe even three guys that he is in touch with regularly on a daily, on a weekly basis, not daily basis, on a, on a weekly basis. And what I mean by that is, <clears throat> Jason B. Kendrick, if you disappeared for a week, I would know. I mean, yeah. you know, there, there are other men as well, but if you disappear, and I know for a fact that if I disappeared, disappeared for a week, not like, hey, man, I'm busy, I'm, you know, but mm -hmm. if I just went radio silent, yeah. I know for a fact that there are men like you and other men that would absolutely, I have a men's group that meets in my house once a week. You know, I mean, and, and other things like that. And so I think that guys, you know, in order for us to help help distribute the weight that we all carry, we need to be around other guys on at least a weekly basis, um, whether that's therapy, whether that's a small group, whether that's having a buddy that you check, whether that's having, you know, a weekly or almost like Facebook Live, I don't know what it is, but just a, a check in. Uh, of some kind of a check-in with um with with guys or or another guy yeah i mean and that something that popped in my head while you're talking is that is the fact that as men purpose is one of our biggest pillars in our lives you know if we don't have a purpose if we don't have something larger than ourselves mm -hmm. to live for and that could be our family that could be our, our purpose it could be our job or whatever but we need a larger something bigger than ourselves to give us purpose, to give us direction. And when we isolate, when we don't share, when we don't have other men, we don't, we don't have a family or we, we don't have these outlets. We don't feel like we have a purpose. We don't feel like we belong to anything larger than ourselves. And I think that's a lot of the reasons we get into these downward spirals of, of unhealthy mental health and get into suicide and addictions and all these different things, because as part of who we are, just our makeup, we, we had to feel part of something larger, something bigger. And maybe we had that when we were younger with school or the military or something. Mm -hmm. As you get older, you may not have that anymore. So mm -hmm. where can you find that? And I think having a men's group or having a men's circle or somebody you you check in with, having somebody else that, that you're accountable to and they're accountable to you that you can check in with and they're going to check in with you gives you something greater than yourself. Even if it's just mm -hmm. one other person, that's something yeah. greater than yourself to live for and to give you purpose. Yeah, you're right. Like, uh, you know, it's almost um, unspoken accountability. Like, I'm going to I'm going to be meeting and checking in with this guy or these guys on a regular basis or just showing up, you know, is is a level of, of accountability to the whole thing. But it has to be safe, obviously. And and it's one of those things that it's like, oh, man, that's the last thing I need. But I'm telling you, man, when when you are plugged in with other men as men, at some point you realize like, man, I can't do life without checking in with other guys kind of thing. And, you know, way back in the day, guys used to go hunting together and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And they would get out and get some space, you know, but it's something about being shoulder to shoulder with other men that's therapeutic in itself for yeah. men. You know, me and you have been shoulder to shoulder on golf courses. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that kind of stuff is, and you can't replace that time. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we happen to talk, you know, con converse a lot and all that kind of stuff. Most of the time it ain't about nothing deep. <laughs> We're not solving problems, <laughs> but you can't replace that time of just literally shoulder to shoulder, man. And just being um, next to other pillars as we hold up the weight of culture of, of the women in our lives, of the kids in our lives, of, of just the social circles that we're around and all those kinds of things. You can't replace that, man. Well, I mean, this is the thought I had about this too. And it's one of the things that's been coming, especially since after we talked about last week and the week before and everything. And I think one of the things that's causing us, not just men, but women as well, and just the whole, whole culture to have such struggles right now is because so many men do have unhealthy mental health and mm -hmm. where we don't have that purpose of something bigger than ourselves. We don't, we're not having those men on men times where we're together and, and, and helping each other, you know, like you should say, you know, iron sharpens iron, men sharpen men. We mm -hmm. need to have those time together. It doesn't have to be some big thing. It just needs to be time together. 
And we've mm-hmm. said, I don't know how many times in the past, ladies, your man needs to be, if you want, if you're not feeling attracted to him, that means the polar, the polarization is off. It means mm-hmm. you're being too masculine. He's being too feminine. Send mm-hmm. him out with the boys, send him out with, mm-hmm. with other men. He'll come back more masculine. He'll come back, you know, recharge or refresh. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I say, I don't know how many times, you know, the, the, my favorite analogy of the masculine and the feminine is the male, the masculine is at the riverbank. Mm-hmm. And you know, it, it gives it gives room for the feminine to flow, but mm-hmm. also there's some boundary. Mm-hmm. I think what's happening now is the the that riverbank has been flattened. So now the mm-hmm. river just overflowed the banks, and there's no direction, there's no mm-hmm. real <clears throat> guidance there. And a lot of it's due to us men and not okay. feeling masculine enough, not feeling like men, not feeling comfortable enough to be who we are, mm-hmm. and, and caretaking and 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 being nice guys, and and not feeling like we can be those pillars and, and, and be that strong structure. We mm-hmm. feel like we, you know, we're, we're too busy chasing after women to get our validation and, and to, to, you know, get them to make us feel like men, which doesn't make any sense, but that's what we do. So getting back mm-hmm. as men to being men, to finding our core, mm-hmm. our purpose and our yeah. thing that's greater than us will get us back into that place of being a pillar and, and that space holder. Yeah. I mean, I think it takes a man to make a man, and I think it takes men to make a man better in 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 manly ways and masculine ways to reaffirm that and to to be in that. And so, absolutely, time, safe time with safe men. You know, I think you, there are circles of guys that you could be with that aren't necessarily healthy for you or good for you. There are places that and things you can do as men that don't really make you a better man. Um, if it involves consuming something, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, and, and so, I mean, I think, you know, I, I think there are safe environments, but man, when you and I, you know, you and I, and, and I'd say you and I, cause we're the only two faces here on the screen besides my kids behind me, but, um, you know, man, there are times where we sit down and man, we, we, you know, we might have a beer, we might have a drink, you know, man, man, you've, you've stayed in my home before overnight for stuff, man, we've, you know, like I said, we ain't trying to solve nothing. It's not like we're doing deep therapy, emotional work. Yes, there's absolutely appropriate times to go get professional help to deal with those wounds in particular. The day-to-day stuff, the day-to-day life that we have, man, that level, that type of mental health is just living life with men, living life amongst men and with men and and, you know, and, and, and getting it from that way. And that's also why it's important for young men to just be around circles of men as well. Yeah, I mean, doing things like volunteering, Habitat for Humanity, or going, uh, I just found a, a veteran-focused equine therapy place in, that, in Elizabeth, mm-hmm. Colorado here that mm-hmm. rescues horses and then brings veterans with PTSD in. And it's, you're not doing much, but feeding and, and brushing the horses and things, but being there with other men, other veterans, other people who understand, mm-hmm. who get it, you don't have to talk about it. I mean, shoot, last time when I was, was it? You came over to help me move my couch or something. I mean, that was male mm-hmm. bonding time. We didn't mm-hmm. have to talk about anything deep, mm-hmm. but that's still just being in that masculine energy together, building something, creating something, digging a ditch. I mean, mm-hmm. you, you you pick your poison, but just be around other men. It, and if you are feeling like it's time to like you were trying to take yourself out, and it's time to go, that's when definitely reach out to somebody and find that that professional help because we're losing way too many men right now. And yeah. it's, it's becoming uh, very unhealthy for all of us, not just mm-hmm. the men, but for the women as well and our families. Yeah. The more we lose men, the more men step away from the, the family dynamic and, and stop taking a, a role in the family, mm-hmm. the more it exacerbates the same issue. And we're, we're a unit. We're, you know, we may not need each other anymore to survive in the world, but men and women need each other energetically emotionally and spiritually and the yeah. more men are checking out the more unhealthy this world gets yeah i'm telling you man loneliness and isolation man that is that is i mean navy seals don't go into battle alone you know these are what we would consider like the, the alpha warrior these days you know in in the world and those guys don't go into battle they didn't send one navy seal in to get bin laden they sent like a whole team plus had another team on backup kind of thing i mean that's and so, you know, for us to think that we can do it alone is 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 ridiculous, honestly. And so, you know, so as we line up on the runway here, you know, buckle our seat belts, you know, everybody puts, you know, stow your tray tables and uh, bring your seats to an upright position. 
um, as we prepare for a landing here, man. I mean, I, what do you what do you think our takeaways are here today? We we've got to make it okay for men to be emotional and to be vulnerable, whether that means therapy or retraining ourselves, um, finding safe places, creating safe places for men. I mean, and as as men, have got to make it okay for ourselves. I know we. Kirk and I have both, and we've talked about it many times, have had those same struggles and are still struggling with it. It doesn't go away. We may have the scars, but we still have those struggles. I still struggle with even saying I'm upset or I'm lonely or I'm having mm -hmm. these issues. So mm -hmm. finding, creating these safe spaces for men. And if, if you're a woman in a man's life, being that safe place for him, or even better, sending him to a men's group or someplace where he can he can express because mm -hmm. if we don't express it'll either explode or implode and neither mm -hmm. one's good yeah you know man i i had the opportunity yesterday uh with this uh these couple guys have this um this kind of men's initiative that they're kicking off or have kicked off and i had the opportunity to go in and just kind of sit in a chair and tell my story as long as i wanted to tell my story i think i was probably in there for like over an hour or something like that just going at it. And, um, you know, that was the first time I'd ever told my story and it was on camera and they'll be releasing it kind of thing, whatever. But, um, but that was the first time telling my story that I ever got emotional, like telling some of the details of, of my story. And I, at this point, I, it's in my book. I've, you know, I've told it many times and all that kind of stuff, but, you know, just the, just being able to get emotional, you know, in front of a couple cameras, with microphones going and a couple guys sitting in the background, you know, I just kind of caught myself in that moment, just realizing like, man, you know, this is taking a whole lot more strength than I thought it would. And there's some level of strength as men that we need um, that we can only get by having strong community and strong support and safe places around us that allow us to be vulnerable and allow us to be transparent and allow us to be weak, quote unquote, you know, in, in a moment. Um, and uh, and just us as as men, you know, we got to ask ourselves, you know, if I disappeared for a week, how many men would call me or come knocking on my door? Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, that's that's a that's indicative of the strength of your circle. And I would say that if you have less than I'm going to say less than three men that would that would be tracking you down or and or knocking on your door <clears throat> if you went quiet for a week if you have less than three then you probably don't have a very strong um social mental health circle and i think that's very important because i think you know culture society our relationships our kids is whatever is depending on healthy men to really write some ships that that need to be righted um and so I, I think that's just hugely important in this culture. And if you need a guy, if you need a guy that, that you know, that is all about connection, so much so that he's the connection catalyst. I mean, he catalyzes connectivity. <laughs> if you if you if if there is a guy, I'm telling you, this guy <laughs> right here is a great guy. How could they get in touch with Jason B. Kendrick, the connection catalyst, if they need to? I'm pretty easy. I mean, right here is jasonbkendrick.com. Look me up on Facebook, facebook.com, uh, Jason B. Kendrick, YouTube. Look up look up Mad Men Masculinity on YouTube and, and me as well. I mean, we're here for you. We want to do this work. We do it for ourselves, but we want to do it with you. And that's the thing is it's – I know in all the work we do and I know with, with this guy over here, we learn so much together. We grow so much together that that's what we're, we want to do is come together. So come see me, come see this guy over here, the intimacy incubator, Mr. Kirk M. Samuels, this guy, where's your book, by the way, I, you know, I'm always showing mine off over here. Where's your book at? That's it's, a book it's, that it's, it's, most it's, people men and women need to be reading. Yeah. It's in the garage. <laughs> I need to, people. I know, I know, man. I, it's garage therapy. I uh, call it. Um, I'm gonna be setting up an office here in, in my house pretty soon, man. And I'm telling you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a change of background. I'm gonna have my book in the background. I'm gonna, I'm gonna up my game here pretty soon, man. But uh, in the meantime, you know, Kirk M. Samuel is pretty, you know, pretty, pretty easy to get a hold of me. And I know my phone number is on my website. And I know you're very easy to get a hold to. And I know, I know, I speak for myself, and I can, I think I can speak safely for you that if somebody was to reach out to us, you know, it 
the first thing we would do would be not to try to bill you or to charge you or we we have the heart as men to do this and to reach out to guys because guys need connection and because guys need to know that they're significantly a part of something um and so yes we are both coaches and yes we both coach men and yes we both do that kind of thing when it gets to the point of a you know professional kind of relationship but but our hearts are about are, are about bringing men to healthier places so that we can be fantastic for the world around us including the women around us and that's why we are mad for masculinity mm -hmm. Um, That's right. And keep your eyes open. We will be starting the Mad Men and Masculinity Inner Circle and Secret Circle, whether that's hmm. virtual, whether it's in person, or hopefully both. I, I love the in person so much more because it gets the energy of men together. But we will be that's great. That. That's, that's great news. I didn't know that. <laughs> so we, we, we've been talking about it. I know you're busy. Though. I know, man. I know. We're all just. Uh, I can't. I can't. So, uh, I can't. You know, keep, planting seeds, hoping. Yeah, you plant seeds, wait for it to grow for something. <laughs> Even he says it's good to have a. He says it's good to have a spotter when lifting beyond your experience, and uh, you're absolutely that's right, so man. True. That's that's true wisdom there, Keith. Keith, we appreciate you, Donna, Nicole. We appreciate yeah. everybody else for watching. We know there's a lot of. We see how many views, and we know there's a lot of people, uh, you know, watching that don't get a chance to chime in. We appreciate all of you, and so like the Mad Men of Masculinity page on Facebook, and you'll get a little notice or pop up whenever we go live and uh, and, and uh, stay and in touch with us. Subscribe to the Mad Men of Masculinity on, mm -hmm. I got, I'm gonna create that actual page. I subscribe to Jason B. Hendrick on uh, YouTube and you'll get notices and updates whenever we, we, we post after this. And mm -hmm. if you wanna catch up, you can watch them on the Mad Men page or you can watch them on YouTube. And that reminds me, so there's another seed. I got to plan for myself. I got to create that Mad Men page on YouTube. So boom. I'm going to go do that now. We love you guys. Thank you so much. Please like, share, comment, and we'll see you next time. The Mad Men of Masculinity. Out. Peace.